Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD 89 VA Claims Consultant, Leave No Vet Behind, and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'm bringing another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. But before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification button, and don't forget to share. Also, you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, we have a link to our website in the description section below, which is kmd89.com. That's Kilo Mike Delta 89.com. Also, I would like to thank the attendees that attended our previous event on how to do keyword searches in the VA's M21 uh, reference manual and the 38 CFR. Had a fun time showing veterans how to do that. Had a lot of questions, uh, and I think everybody definitely appreciated. So be on the lookout for more similar events like that. And I normally will have them on a Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but go to our website, and under our classes uh, link, it'll be listed there, and or I will announce it in, you, in um, upcoming YouTube videos, okay? So, with that being said, let's jump into today's video. And today's video is, what are two things veterans forget to take to their compensation and pension exam, also known as a CMP exam? Now, this can also pertain to if the veteran is going to their private physician to have them to complete an exam, aka DBQ, okay? So, I don't have any slides for you today, but maybe next time, okay? But what is the first thing that veterans fail to take to a CMP exam? And these, before I announce these two and talk about them, these are things, uh, th these are two things that I did. Okay, so when I talk about them, I'm not trying to demean anybody's intelligence or anything like that. Okay, because I, I forgot to do the same thing. But for, I think it was my first CMP exam, one of these items weren't available at the time. So the first thing that veterans fail to take to the CMP exam is knowledge. And you may say, Dwayne, well, I, I'm familiar with the C, I'm familiar with the VA's process. But with talking with veterans, this is the thing they fail to take. One of the things, okay? Knowledge. What do I mean by that? Knowing exactly what exams they're going for, meaning if you're claiming a back, neck, migraines, PTSD. Whatever it is, you need to know which exam they're scheduling, okay? And why is that important? Because as I stated before, you can go to the 38 CFR, the rating schedule, and look at that diagnostic code criteria for that condition. Now, also, I hear third-party contractors, when they call the veteran, and the veteran has applied for... Uh, multiple benefits, okay, more than one, multiple, like three, five, six, seven, or whatever, and if, sometimes a veteran may ask, well, what exams are scheduled? Oh, we don't know. We can't see it. I don't believe that's totally true because let's just say you claim a mental condition and a musculatorial condition and an audio condition. Those are going to be done by three different individuals, an audiologist, a psychiatrist, or a psychologist, and the third one, the back, maybe a nurse practitioner uh, or just a regular MD or physician assistant, something like that. So you're talking about three different body systems, three, in, three different individuals. So if they don't know which ones are being scheduled, how do they know to schedule you for to go see an audiologist or a psychiatrist? Doesn't make sense, okay? So that's something that the veteran may have to fight to get that information. But why is being armed with knowledge on the exam is because if you know you're going to fall three, a mental, an audio, and a musculatorial, 
depending on uh, which one or all, in this case, you can go to the 38 CFR in the rating schedule and look at the criteria. So you know, okay, before you even get there, if you're going in, let's say, for a back, you know what the range of motion, which, you know, you have a general idea what your range of motion is. You say, okay, I think I should be 20% because I believe my range of motion is, it falls under the 20% criteria. If it's a mental, you look at the mental and you say, okay, I believe I should be at the 30% criteria for the mental condition that I'm claiming. Because of X, Y, and Z, I meet these particular symptoms, this particular occupational impairment. Okay, so that's why it's important to have that knowledge when you go to the exam. I didn't think about it on my first exam. I should have because I was rating at the time, but it didn't dawn on me. Okay, later on in some of my other CMP exams, I did, and it helped. Okay, I had a couple, no matter how much knowledge I had, those CMP examiners. They weren't service connecting me for nothing. Even if I had a letter from the president, they still wouldn't have done it. Okay, so you can't you can't fight that because that's that human factor. Okay, so what can you do that's within your control to possibly help you succeed? Okay, one having that knowledge. Okay, the second one, why not take the DBQ with you? Because that's what the VA. I'm sorry. Either the VA CMP examiner or the third party contractors are completing is a DBQ. Now, why is that important? Okay, because you think you may know the questions that's on there. Okay, well, there's a lot of questions. You get to the exam, you don't remember the questions. But if you take that DBQ, and I printed out one here, John Doe that I did, you take this DBQ, right? And you go in there, you know, already know that, hey, I'm here for, you know, a uh, back condition, okay? You got that DBQ. This is not a back DBQ, but it's just a, a DBQ, okay? So you have this DBQ, all right? And you sit down and you start talking to the examiner. Because I talk to so many veterans and they say, hey, I have all these exams and they're telling me I got to be there half the day. And then when I got there, I went through all the exams. I wasn't there more than an hour. Okay? So if you have multiple exams, how do you know that that examiner asked every question <laughs> that's on the DBQ? This is how you do it. You take the DBQ with you. If I had to do it again, I would take this DBQ with me, sit down, and when the uh, examiner starts asking me questions, I would just tell them, I say, I have my DBQ here. I'm going to check off the boxes as we talk. Okay, that way I make sure when I do get a copy of my CMP exam, it should match what you have. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So this one is a, a headache DBQ. Okay, so the first question, are you completing the disability benefit questionnaire at the request of the veteran? or other, that's the two boxes. So they should check the other and put um, VA, uh, regional office, whatever. Are you the VA healthcare provider? No, unless they're at, um, well, even a VA CMP exam, they wouldn't be a healthcare provider. That would be your primary care provider. Um, is a veteran regularly seen as a patient of your clinic? Now, if this is QTC, LHI, or, or um, What's the other one? LES, that would be no. Um, was a veteran examined in person? Uh, yes or no. And then if no, blah, blah, blah. Then it talks about records review. Okay. But then as you get into the pertinent information, you know, page two, does a veteran now have or has ever had, ever been diagnosed with a headache condition? And then they put the diagnosis. And then you just go down question by question by question. Uh, and the reason why that's so important, because when I went to a couple, well, one, I remember one of my CMP, CMP exams, or two, I went, when I, once I obtained a copy of that uh, VA CMP exam from the release of information, that CMP examiner did not ask me a lot of the questions. 
And I hear veterans say that. And I think by having that DBQ, you force that examiner to do the right thing, ask you the questions. And this even pertains to if they call you and do one over the phone, say, hey, I'm looking at this DBQ. I just want to make sure that we go through and we capture everything. So if you know that examiner missed the question, then when they say, hey, you got anything you want to add? Yeah, on um, I have a DBQ in front of me, and I notice you missed question um, it's in section five, or you missed this question in section seven, or whatever. Let's go back over those, and so I want to make sure they're documented, okay? So, quick recap. What are the two things that veterans fail to take, to them, take with them to the CMP exam? Knowledge. Now, you may say, well, Dwayne, yeah, I went, and I was successful, but not all veterans are. Or you may say, oh, I went, and I had this knowledge, and I still got denied. Me too, okay? So I'm not saying it's a guarantee because we, we all know that there is a human factor when it comes to this, okay? But knowledge, know why you're there, which conditions, if you have multiple conditions you claim, know why you're there because I've seen or heard veterans say, hey, I thought I was going in for something new that I claimed, but the VSR requested an increase and I didn't claim that increase. So unless there's a routine future, why would you go to an exam that you didn't even claim an increase or a new service connection or whatever, okay? So knowing why you're there. And with that, a subcomponent of that, knowing the criteria for each percentage for that condition that you're going in for that CMP exam for, okay? And then secondly, having the DBQ. Now, if you, obviously, if you have multiple conditions, you may have multiple DBQs. A lot of people say, well, I'm not going to do that. And that's fine. If I had to do it over again, if I had claimed five different things, I would have five different DBQs because this is your claim. Okay? So, with that being said, please like, subscribe, hit that notification button. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And also, go to our website and review our monthly educational classes and be on the lookout for another free event on a Friday, okay? I'll pick a topic, we'll talk about it. I may even do a screen share like I did uh, in the last event. So you definitely want to make sure you stay up to date on that. And so you can, <laughs> I'm sorry, so you can, you can register for the event, okay? So if I don't see you in any of our educational classes, I'll see you in my next YouTube video. Thank you.